I'm Maureen Leonard. I'm a physician, I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist and the clinical director for the Center for Celiac Research and Treatment at Mass General Hospital. I spend about one day a week seeing children and adults with celiac disease and gluten related disorders um, and I spend the rest of my time doing research on celiac and gluten related disorders. I became interested in the field um, during my third year of medical school when I was diagnosed with celiac disease. So while I was already on the path to being a doctor and I was interested in pediatric gastroenterology, that really shifted my focus to really focusing on research, um, autoimmune disease, but particularly celiac disease. My research focuses on looking for biomarkers of celiac disease, looking for the frequency of mucosal recovery in pediatric patients with celiac disease and my major project is called the CDGEM study that stands for celiac disease genomic environmental microbiome and metabolomic study um, so this is a, a prospective international cohort study that follows infants with a first degree family member with celiac disease from birth to hopefully now five or ten years of age and what we're doing is we're collecting blood um, stool and a lot of questionnaires to see if we can try and identify microbial or metabolomic signatures um, that are present before these kids go on to develop celiac disease. So we are really researching, we're waiting for some infants to develop celiac disease and once they do we're going to go back and see if we can identify signatures that were there before they started to lose tolerance to gluten. We did some work and we looked retrospectively at how um, frequent children with celiac disease heal and that was based on knowledge that adults with celiac disease even after two or four years on a gluten-free diet up to 40 percent of them may have persistent enteropathy. Um, so in our sort of retrospective study. This was something that happened just because we were seeing it in clinic. Um, so we looked back through charts and we found one in five children have persistent enteropathy on a gluten-free diet. So I am doing work now um, two different sort of prospective studies to look at this and we're looking for biomarkers to see whether we can predict um, who will heal and then we have another um, second prospective study. And as we learn that there are more and more possibilities of therapeutic options on the market, um, we really want to make sure that that pharmaceutical companies and everybody knows that ch children may need this too. We are doing a pilot analysis now in about 30 gems um, and we're looking at how environmental factors shape the developing microbiome in these infants at risk for celiac disease. So we're starting to look at um, how the microbiome may be altered in infants that were exposed to antibiotics, um, infants depending on the delivery mode and also um, their genetic risk and we're putting that all together to see if we can sort of understand how these factors shape the developing microbiome and later we'll see whether this um, translates to an increase in some chronic immune based disorder particularly celiac disease. We have a subset of infants that have developed celiac disease at 18 months and again because we have so much data we can say at 12 months they did not have positive celiac serology tests so that gives us a window of time to start to look and see what's going on at that time. Because they're so young when they develop it, um, we're able to control for a lot of things. So we really hope that whatever we learn from these infants, we can eventually to apply to not only celiac disease in general, but all other autoimmune diseases, many of which will develop so much later on in life. So this is a really unique group and a really unique learning opportunity. So now that we do have children that have developed celiac disease, we are going back and we're looking at whether there are alterations in the microbiome or the metabolites that it produces. And we're going to try and see whether there are alterations that can predict 
whether these, that these children were going to go on to develop celiac disease. We're matching them with control subjects, um, so we'll be able to say in the subjects that developed celiac disease compared to those who didn't, was there some combination of factors or some alteration, again, in the microbiome that really can tell us a couple months before that this was going to happen. And really what we want to do is then understand it at the physiologic level and really understand what's happening. I think this study will contribute to knowledge that's already being gained from these long-term prospective cohort studies in Europe and from Colorado. And if we can see that children are developing celiac disease early, um, it looks like often symptoms aren't present, it looks like many times the genes are really predictive um, and really helpful on who is going to develop celiac disease, particularly if infants carry two copies of DQ2. So all of this, our work will contribute to what is already known and hopefully this may you know, lead to earlier diagnoses in children at risk for celiac disease. The exciting thing is that we have infants from I think about 35 states at this point. Many families that are participating are now putting in their second child. So while it is a very intense study, we're asking for a lot of information, the families are really engaged and they are putting in other infants. So I think that's pretty exciting. We are still recruiting infants less than six months of age who have a first degree family member with celiac disease. So that's a parent or a sibling with celiac disease, they're eligible to enroll. If parents are worried about enrolling their child, Child, they should know that we don't um, ask them to do anything except give us um, the blood that will test for celiac disease and stool that will study. So their child is not asked to um, do anything experimental for the study.